good. Yep. Story time, kids. said okay I just broke up with my girlfriend like two hours before so we go there when I mean there we decided to go to the graveyard and it was raining and it was nighttime and we went to the, the local graveyard and everyone started taking hits of it and then they were tripping balls and we were you know amongst all these headstones and I kept trying to do it and nothing was happening and then my buddy said well if you're already drunk it neutralizes the effect of DMT. And I had been drinking a bottle of whiskey. So apparently I was too drunk on the old tailor for the DMT to work. So I just got mad and kept drinking. And then one of my buddies kept running into a headstone and fucked his ankle up and then he tried to charge it again. So I had to tackle and stop him. And then this other guy started to dry hump a headstone. He's like, look at this little girl. And he starts dry humping the headstone, tripping balls. And then this other guy starts telling me a story about this boss we all had that had done 20 years in prison. He's like, yeah, back in the 90s, some people did drugs in this in this cemetery, the same cemetery we're at here by the campus of University of Oregon. And name drop. And he said that a bunch of them took acid. And this guy who was being all weird and, and odd... The, uh, he, he said he was going to stay, and this chick said, oh, I'll stay with him. So they did, and the next morning they found her head in the graveyard that had been cut off and placed, and there was a pentagram. And apparently Wait, this guy... This is a true story. Apparently this guy had sacrificed this girl in the name of Satan accordingly. This was the same cemetery when we were tripping out. Like, that's pretty cool. And then we ended up leaving the, the cemetery... And yeah, there's old graves in there from like the 1800s. Damn. But yeah, that is apparently a true story. So with DMT, is there like different kinds like acid or? I'm not sure. Well, I know there's like ayahuasca, like there's different ways to extract the DMT, which is the chemical like when you die and like when you sleep and when you like have birth, when you're born. And it's certain chem- certain things is higher concentrations, like the ayahuasca plant, which is like this vine-like plant that grows in South America. And then in traditions down there, like the Incas and the other Mesoamerican people, they would take it and they would cut it up and then they would boil it down into a tea. And it would take like six hours to brew fully. But yeah, that's like the traditional way to take DMT, which is dead and mental. Some it's the... It's known as like the the god particle. That's what it's called. Hmm. See, I couldn't. I already have a bad time with hallucinogenics already, and yeah. doing them in a graveyard. Like if I went to a graveyard, did some acid, I'd be start. I'd trip balls. I'd be like, think I'm seeing ghosts and shit, and I'd just start freaking out. Or I'd, like, have a great idea to go, like, dig up some graves for some Trevor and Treasure Treasure or some shit, you know? You, you know, I, I, I hope I would be the first person to be like, hey, Trevor, dig up some graves. Like, I hope <laughs> I'm the first person you would call. Would I at least be in the top ten, hopefully, of, like, I need a guy to help me bury up some bodies real quick and do some shady-ass shit involving the devil. All right, summon the devil, maybe. So, let's go behead some chick. <laughs> Then we're gonna fuck some other chick on the on the pentagram. It's be raining. There's just be weird, like a bunch of dudes in robes, just just like just chanting backwards Latin for some reason. This is gonna be weird. <laughs> That'll be some wild ass shit. Baby sacrifice, you know, casual. <laughs> Baby thing. sacrifice. Casual things. I don't know, let's put a little fetus in there, just cause. Hell yeah. Here's a here's a graveyard song I like. <laughs> It's a folk punk song about doing drugs in the graveyard. Literally, that's what the song's about. It's like, I've done that before. Jeff Lewis, man, he's good.
I think we just recorded the funniest thing ever. Pretty funny. <laughs> Started the bong rip. Me telling the stories, and then you just talking with me, and then this. I'll be like, Chris, check this out. <laughs> Having a good time? Oh, yeah. With me, of course you're going to have a good time. Like last night. Yeah, I'd be offended if you're like, Trevor, you're not fun anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully that doesn't happen. I don't think it'll happen. You know me, but I like to party. Every time we've hung out, there's always been something crazy. Oh, remember I had a whole Christina last time? Yeah, it, I had a whole this fat chick on my back. She's happy. She's very versatile. She's a happy gal. It's Good the, thing I have big legs. It's always been something interesting every single time we've gone out. <laughs> Good. Life. That's why I think our podcast is like you, Chris, and I, like, it's gonna be funny as fuck. That's why I wanted to get this done. He's like, this is too much funny potential. Oh, yeah. Especially you having out too, like, be the third lonely boy in the canoe, that'd be dope. <laughs> Could just make it three lonely. Three, three lonely boys plus in the canoe. <laughs> three lonely boys plus more possibly. Of course, in- three way in a canoe. <laughs> 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 the, th- <laughs> the three-way, the three-way, three-way in a canoe podcast. <laughs> and you just put the three-way in a canoe podcast. People be like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, that'd be great. <laughs> three dudes. Three dudes. <laughs> Did you know hit me up recently? Fucking wolf the day we're like oh a week ago he's like wanna have a drink and hang out and I'm like I didn't answer I'm like no okay no I'm not trying to hang out with this weird flamboyant gay guy just hang out and have <laughs> drinks with him that hates women yeah, so, try. so he fucks dudes to get back at women yeah he's gonna try to fuck me and I'm gonna beat him up and then I'm gonna go to jail that's exactly <laughs> what's gonna happen it's like give me that sweet ass and they're like I'm fucking you up now. No. Wolf. I'm afraid he would try to make moves on me and then I would defend myself and I would go to jail. Like, that's what would happen. Wolf has a lot of stories that we can tell. I mean... The oh, wolf. he tried telling me some some stories about some, some of his gay stories. I was like, whoa! Like, one day he's like, yeah, I blew this guy by a cornfield and he started telling me some shit. I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Like... You start telling out of nowhere, I'm like, what the fuck? Well, I mean, even that, that one day where he was saying, like, he's a god and shit, you know? Yeah. He's a weird motherfucker. And definitely can do, like, some kind of podcast material, like a whole episode just on Wolf. Oh my god! And, and his friend sometimes Jacob shows up. Remember his, his younger friend that was always super drugged out? Yeah, he yeah. was funny too. Jacob, I went to the river with him one time. Did I see what happened? I didn't know you went to a river with him. Jacob, the younger guy, it was just Jacob and I. No, really? it was just Jacob and I. We just went to the river. I got super fucked up. We went to the river. And it was like August. This, this is another good song. Same guy. Back one for us. This is about his living life. <laughs> but yeah, this, so Jake and I go to the river, and we end up like wading across to this a chain of islands. Cause out there, there's like some islands out there. Mm-hmm. I've been to. We like we like literally cruised around went to like three different islands. Just, like, swam a little bit and, like, watered through and found, I don't know, just, like, found a bunch of cool shit in the island and just, like, waded around to different islands. I always do make a pirate noise when we had an island, like, arg. <laughs> Funny. It was a good time. The song's about getting older. Getting older? I love the song. Thank you.
this is pretty true though about life. It's like 27, you start to calm down a little bit. And then by like your 30s, you're like, this is life. <laughs> there you go. So this is the chick that I'm trying to get with. Oh shit. Yeah, bitter. Damn. She does wildlife firefighting. What's her name? Uh, her name's Haley. Oh, yeah. I got some spicy pics of her. Well, I'm trying to get in there. Good luck. If she wants an older man that's done fire, well, you know a guy. You know a guy. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. Yeah. This motherfucker. Oh, now. dude. So my brother... Yeah, it's my older brother here, Trevor. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know my brother, J- Josh, right? I think you've met him maybe once. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think I've met any of your family. I don't think I've met your brother, Josh. But there were so many random people that would come into that room that I didn't know half the motherfuckers. I'd be sitting on the porch and like, Jack, and then like a parade of six dudes, and then you would show up, and I'd be like, what the fuck is happening right now? And they'll just look at me and be like, what's up, guys? I'm just playing metal scales. Drinking uh, my 40. <laughs> so my brother last night, uh, we were talking about, you know, fucking bitches, as guys do. Yes, what guys talk about. And uh, he was saying, like, uh, I, was telling, I was telling him about this Haley chick, and then he was, uh... Let the team smash. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, not, not with my brother. No, that's not how it is. I'm not gonna fuck the same chick as my brother. That's weird. Ah, <laughs> oh, let the team smash. I'll let the team hit it, but I'm not gonna let my family hit it. That's just weird. That's the team, homeboy. That's hilarious. That's like on the board. That's like the border of incest. That's just that's just the middleman right there. Is your brother pretty funny normally? Yeah, yeah, he's pretty funny. Should I meet him sometime? Oh yeah, yeah. I got uh. Let the team smash. <laughs> that's fucking funny. I got four brothers. Oh shit! I got four brothers and two sisters. So if I was ever like, you know, the let the team smash brother, you'd be like, okay. I only know two of my brothers and one of my sisters. Okay. And, uh, but my older brother, Josh, he's pretty cool. He's always been there. And, uh, he, he's pretty funny. He's, like, super gangbanging, though. You know what I mean? He's, like, definitely, like, one of those people that tries to be a gangbanger. Why? Huh? I always, I always want to, like, why? Like, why do you gotta be like, I'm part of this gang, I'm cool. I do my own thing. the way you grew up. How old's your brother? 25. Oh. Yeah, he's younger than me. Ooh. <laughs> Alright, let's pause this thing. It's gonna get All right, this is Cash. I'm going to pack a new bowl. Tell your story, though, about Wolf. First time where you met Wolf. So, the first time I met Wolf, it started out like... Go back to when you didn't know that... I, yeah, I didn't... You didn't know yet who he was. You thought it was me on the keyboard. So, Wolf has a synthesizer. <laughs> and... It's where he was out playing... Um, on the balcony and I didn't know about Wolf so I thought a Trevor got synthesizer so I thought he was sticking around with it and I go out so it woke me up because it was so fucking loud and it sounded like garbage <laughs> <laughs> so I go out there and I see this weird ass looking dude <laughs> long freaky ass hair playing this synthesizer and I think like you were trying to jam out with him or something and it was just like the most off 
tune off. I couldn't play along with him. I didn't know what the fuck was cause, happening. Because it's a synthesizer. You can't really play along with him. And he, he kept changing key constantly. I was like, I, know. I was like, bro, stick it a key. <laughs> I'm trying to play along with you, you just... And I remember, so you were trying to, like, play along because he wanted to jam or something, so I, I go out there and I hear you guys dick around, and, um, I remember you saying something, like, I don't know, saying something about, like, you know, stop changing it, like, because he would just go from, like, one tune straight to a whole ass another thing. Yeah, he kept changing Jumping octaves. around. Yeah, he kept jumping on octaves, I mean, like, dude. And... It was just the worst thing because it, it, it was so loud. No bitches were going to pull up. He scared <laughs> all of them off. Yep. And it was just, it sounded like garbage. And I remember he did this a lot. <laughs> a lot. He, we would just be chilling. And sometimes we had chicks over sometimes. I remember one time, like, a mul this was like a multiple occasion thing where we would, me and you, or, you know, me, you and Chris would be out there kind of chilling, you'd be kind of playing your guitar, we'd see Wolf, Wolf walk past, and we're like, oh god. <laughs> and he'd just come out without saying a word <laughs> with his synthesizer. Yeah, he gave us this weird look. He just gave us this, like, look, he just, like, like gave us this flashing look, like, oh, I am here. Like, and Wolf was here now. It would be the like, wolf has arrived. It'd be like 9 30, 10 o'clock, and he'd need to turn that bitch all the way up and start playing. <laughs> and like we would be trying to talk. So it's different when you're playing guitar and we can talk and everything. Because I'm used to playing guitar along to people conversating. Yeah, and it's it's not that loud, but like we so, wouldn't be able to hear each other because <laughs> it was so fucking loud. Just like da 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 ba 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 da 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 was the weirdest <laughs> shit. And then he like changed like the little uh the uh, voice on it or whatever so it's yeah. like the weirdest fucking sounds it's at like 10 30 on a fucking weekday you know people got class people got wednesday work. night is just like <laughs> <laughs> oh my god dude. just start going the fuck is up chilies <laughs> <laughs> this is the weirdest shit ever like he's just the weirdest motherfucker i've ever known always talking about hating women uh, something about like the darkness in his soul or some shit. He talked about his stepmom a lot. He's like, my stepmom would beat me for belt, and part of me liked it, but part of me didn't. He just talked about some weird shit. And that's when I knew my stepmom was the Antichrist and I had to hate women. Like he started saying some shit like that. I was like, yeah. bro, I'm sure she was bad, but come on. He thought like he was like a savior or he wasn't no he wasn't like a part of this galaxy or some shit or I'm, I'm, I'm just a visitor but I'm actually I'm meant to be in a, a higher plane of existence <laughs> I guess man what drugs are you taking that's what I want to know right. what the fuck are you smoking bro talking about he's god and oh, shit god. he's gonna save, save I am, us I am Xenu I am the god of Scientology I'm here to save you all like <laughs> yay Elrod Hubbard was right all the time oh save us god. help us Tom Cruise lead the way Fucking Scientology yeah, okay. Scientology man Dude, let's is, talk about that it is okay. a cult um, so I was watching this video. Oh, um, here we go. Scientology. There's the, there these guys on YouTube, and what they did was they uh, put spy glasses on. Because when you go into Scientology, you can't, um, you can't record it at all. And uh, so these guys, they got, they got these uh, glasses with a little camera in them. To kind of like infiltrate Scientology, oh, and it's like a eight episode thing on YouTube with each episode being like 20, 30 minutes long. I actually recommend it. That shit is crazy. Uh, so they got into it, and the dude was like kind of pranking them, but kind of not trying to see how far he can get into Scientology. And uh, so when he first got in, you know, because Scientology is all about your money. They want your money. Yeah, fucking. How, how rich you are? Yeah, you know. And That'd be too poor. For that so kind of these thing. guys, this guy, he goes in. They want you to buy these books, these Scientology books, like the Bible or some shit. You know what I mean? Their version. And uh, what happened was, he said he hasn't got any money, and uh, he doesn't have that much money, and the books are like eighty bucks. 
80 bucks or some shit. Like fucking college textbooks or some shit. Yeah. Jesus. And there will be a quiz at the end of this. Oh. And the, so he was like trying to explain to him that he doesn't have that much money. He can't pay for him. He, he, he was saying, I need, I need this money for my groceries this week. And then he's like, would you rather have me buy this Scientology book or these groceries? And the lady said, uh, I mean, it's up to you, but we would reckon. She's kind of hinting that she would much rather him buy the, gro- buy the books. So he ended up getting the books anyway, because money isn't an issue. He was just saying that to just kind of, you know, bring it out. So he goes in, and then there's this cleansing ritual or whatever the fuck. And you just sit in a sauna for like an hour or something like that. Like an hour or two hours. And like sauna's recommended time is like 20 minutes, right? Something like that. Because it's like dangerous to sit in the sauna. But then they're talking about like sweating all the toxins out, blah, 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 this and that. And shit gets crazier when he goes in and they start like brainwashing him. Like they literally brainwashed this guy on camera, but they didn't know because he had these glasses on. So he goes, so what what happened was he had to tell this story, this traumatizing story, and uh, to to this lady, like that was interviewing him and stuff, and he came out with an entirely different story. She kept, and it was like six hours long. He was sitting in there, which was crazy. So this guy got brainwashed for six hours, and they recorded this story before he went in, and then they recorded this story after he went in, after he came out, and uh, two completely different stories. So they like brainwashed this guy. So the Scientology, they take your money, and I'm talking like lots of your money and brainwash you and they have these creepy like galas they go to and stuff these parties and uh i don't remember who did it but um here i'll i think it's i'll look it up real quick Infiltrating Scientology is this uh, series he does, and it's like insane. And I mean, the, <laughs> in the story, like their story for it is crazy too. It's like alien spirits or some shit. But um, what's the name of our with name of our podcast? Wolf and other higher dimensional beings. But, like, if anything, Wolf would definitely be into, like, Scientology or some shit. <laughs> Alright. And that's all, folks. Good? Yep. There we go.
Good times. inside the apartment. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't it, was know the, you did it was the first time I met, I met them. I was high on acid. I just walked into their flat in this year. And I take a cigarette and I leave. Yeah. They didn't know me. You should have gone back after they got to tell you like that. So I'm going to end it on that side. It was pretty funny. I remember how we were like the poor kitty side, remember? And they were like the nice, fucked up side. Like, 
for the for the blue for the, the blue collar workers. Three <laughs> some rednecks over there, and then like the people on disability and just general like section eight. That's who was there. SSI, all that. Hey <laughs> Josh, people are unemployed. Or... It was a nice size apartment though, they were big. You there? Yeah, oh, they're jagging over there. Yeah, they're doing them fucking all that shit. It was a lot nicer. It was an actual apartment. Yeah. You just had like the fucking stuff. Here you go, bases. The roof may or may not leak on you, but we don't get fucking the point. Yeah, we can also get like stories about Murphy and the time he threw scissors at Chris. Yeah. Oh my god. I saw Murphy last time when you were here. Remember he came over, he was chilling right there. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, I just gave him a brief head nod. He was like, you know this? Yeah. He, like, right. he did it to himself. I'm sorry, man. I'm just living. That's <laughs> not your fault. That's not my fault. I'm like, you do what you need to be at peace with yourself. You know, all right, man. I'm trying to like, give him some just like general advice. I'm like, all right, I'll just be nice. I'm just going to be nice to you. Thank you, Dale. Yeah. 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 This guy. He's 
A monkey fucking a baby monkey or whatever. <laughs> oh no, oh no. <laughs> it's just that gorgeous scenery, like like some of the most beautiful scenery on the earth in tropics. Look how we get down in the tropics. Oh my god. I can tell you some funny monkey stories if you want to hear it. And I'd I mean... Okay, we good? Yep. Alright. Here we go. Operation X. Hole in the wall barbecue. <laughs> the names of the different food trucks. The fuck is that? Elephant, elephant soul food barbecue. With the food truck. What's up? Ice cream waffles. So you still working that food truck. What the fuck is that? Game and Busters. <laughs> it has to be restaurants, though. Like, it has to stick within a place that says food. So, like, IKEA cafeteria, because IKEA the first place. So as soon as I have a cafeteria, you can have like Scandinavian food, like Swedish sweet balls and shit. And it's like, pretty good. Swedish meat balls are high as fuck. <laughs> pretty good. Like a cranberry stuff, cranberry, it's pretty good. We were the youngest dudes in the I, bar. I think it's because uh, the concert that was going on. We were a bunch of big bands. I think that was like a... That band must be kind of big because she was way... Uh, let me look up how big it is.
that big. What? We got like nine subscribers on YouTube. Great. Is this to like for alleyway uh, ambience to this is the background song? Just take one. <laughs> Facebook. Oh, yeah. 
where in the world did this happen? <laughs> I don't know. They said it was a festival, so that's some music festival. It said day three at a Started the podcast here. Should I have music? Yeah, let me do music too. Keep it low. Keep it low. How about this? Okay. So, take the bong rip and the, the beer sip. <laughs> Always the bong rip. Let Jesus take the wheel. Don't do that. I had a guy, a friend of mine, we were out fishing, and we are coming back. There's another true story. And I was joking around, listening, like, Slayer and Campbell Force, a bunch of metal, death metal, coming back. And I was like, let Jesus take the wheel. We're out in the country somewhere. We are out by, like, uh, we grew out by, like, the Dexter Dam out there. And um, he just let go of the fucking steering wheel and started to drive towards the other side. I grabbed the wheel, and I'm like, Jesus is not a good driver. I don't like this. <laughs> and then he laughed and we just kept going. I was like, dude, he's like the whole truck just fucking fly across. It's like, bro. That scared me. I've, yeah. I've, I've done that to people, though. Yeah, it's kind of fucked up. Has. Yeah, it's fucked up. Like, what if you really both die because you're just trying to be funny? Like, shit does happen. I mean, that's a funny way to die. <laughs> So what's your story about your Superman joke or All right. joke off? All right. So these uh, these guys, the Horsehead Bar we were at last night, they're like, hey, you must think you're a funny guy because I talked to him as just being myself. And this one guy's like, I just have a joke off. And then the guys were like, yeah, get him. I think his name was like, Doug or some shit. Doug. <laughs> some shit like Doug. He's already not funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it was Doug. I don't remember exactly, but it was some D name. It was His some... life's a joke. It was name was Doug. <laughs> That's Doug. Doug's such a funny name. But yeah, and then so he starts telling us jokes, and then I just start telling a bunch of just like offensive jokes and like all my bar jokes. And I told jokes like the uh, Superman joke where the guy... This guy's name, we'll say his name is Bob, and there's this three-story building with a uh, office on the bottom floor, everyone works, and then the second floor is a bunch of hotel rooms where they where they stay while they're doing this, and then on the third floor is a bar, and they, uh, afterwards work, they go to the bar, and then they go down to the, where, they, where they stay, and this guy Bob goes in after a hard day at the office, and there's this really big guy just sitting there at the bar, just pounding shots of whiskey and he's like fuck man and he sits kind of you know part way down the bar from this big guy the bartender's like hey what do you what do you want and uh he sees this big guy and the big guy says something he says hey I bet you uh I bet you 50 bucks right now that I can slam the shot of whiskey jump out the window land on the ground and run up before you finish the shot of whiskey that you take at the same time so, the guy's like, all right, you're on. So the big dude slams the shot, jumps down, lands, and runs up before Bob can finish his. He starts sputtering whiskey everywhere, like, what the fuck? All right, here's $50. He, and he said, well, but you couldn't do that again even faster. 
And the guy's like, oh yeah? But I can get it done before you even bring the whiskey to your lips this time. Like, all right, you're on. Fucking starts to move his hand, big dude jumps out, lands, runs up even quicker this time before he hits his lips. It's like, damn it, 100 bucks. And the big guy's like, you know what? I think if you took a shot right now, I bet you could do it. He's like, I don't know, man. He's like, no, I believe in you. <laughs> so that he, uh, he's like, all right, takes a shot, jumps out, falls, splats, and dies. The bartender looks at the big guy and says, Superman, you're a fucking asshole when you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so I told jokes like that, and then Doug and these other guys at the bar, they were like, all right, fine, fine, and they left, man. I, like, demoralized this guy. <laughs> I was like, bro, you like the wrong guy. <laughs> I'm a joke fucking off. joke off. I was like, so you have chosen death. <laughs> oh my god. It like reminds me of like dance battles. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you've seen Oh yeah. You've had this. They're so like cringe. That's, I mean, that's like this. The guy's like, it's uh, a joke off. Yo, I've seen, I've actually seen some dance offs. I have some funny stories about that too, if you ever wanted, but yeah. So I was in high school. And I was like, stories, let's go. I was like 10th grade. And uh, I was like a loner. I didn't, I literally had like no friends in high school, but that's a whole other thing. Oh boy. And so, so but I, I knew, I knew most of the people there. I just, I used to be friends with most of the people there. I just not anymore. So I'm. There's this dance, there's this go- thing going on, and I, like, it's lunchtime, and there's a crowd of people, so I'm like, dude, there's a fight, no fucking way. I'm, like, hyped to go watch it. No, it's this little Asian, like, 5'4 kid dance battling this big-ass wag dude. And it's like, what the fuck? Dude? It was the cringiest shit I've ever seen in my life. I'm talking, like, there was, like, no moves whatsoever. This guy was, like, crip walking. The black guy? <laughs> <laughs> the Asian kid was crit walking. He's like fucking 15, 16, 5 foot 4. And uh, he's like barely, barely hitting this crit walk. And it was just so fucking funny because there was just no movements. There was like nothing. You know, they weren't doing anything really. And it's a bad dance battle. Oh, yeah. Very, very bad, and everyone was hyping them up, you know, this and that, but like, they were like, joking hyping them up, because everyone knew it was terrible, so like, hell yeah, I get it, but like, kind of like, joking around. Yeah, you know, kind of bullying them a little bit, but uh, it was terrible. Is this because they have special needs? No, no. Bad. No, it would have been funnier. Huh. Than, like, the Asian That's kids, terrifying like, that they even didn't. It's like, maybe they did in their own way. It, it, it would have been funnier if the kid had special needs, like this. Not saying, that, you know, you know what I'm saying, but yeah. like, it'd be kind of funny to see like a kid on, with Down syndrome, you know, crit walking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, and then I remember high school fights, you know, and I went to spring, I went to uh, like multiple different high schools. I went to FICO, the military school. And then I went to uh, oh, shit. Springfield High. Okay. And let me tell you, the the fights at Pika were crazy. The military fights? Yeah, the military. Because these kids were fucking jacked, bro. Oh. These kids were fucking, they're like 16, fucking ripped. You know, the military school, you know, you work out hella every day. Nice. And so they would do crazy, like, they, you know, there'd be brawls every once in a while, but, like, no one would brawl that much because you get in serious trouble. It's not like you, you don't get, like, detention. You know, you get, like, crazy-ass tasks to do, a bunch of workouts, all that. So nobody liked fighting and getting in trouble. <laughs> I have a lot of stories from Pico. Actually, mm-hmm. it was one of the most funniest fucking places ever. Because it's like, think of it like, um, like... Teenagers going into boot camp. Mm. That, that can't end well, you know what I mean? No. So it's the funniest shit. I remember uh, one time we were in uh, PT um, gym class, mm. and he was my uh, fucking staff sergeant. He was saying some shit. He was like, oh, just saying some shit. And uh, this kid, he was uh, kind of laughing, talking a little bit. You know, we're supposed to be quiet. Oh, shit. So, uh, what he does, he makes the, uh, he makes the kid, since he likes to talk so much, he's like, 
Go go over to the fucking wall. Start talking to the fucking wall and then do not stop. And I do not want to hear you not talking. So already it's like the funniest shit ever now. Like fucking this, we're all trying to be serious. And then there's this kid in the back straight up talking to the wall. You know, how was your day? You know, all that and that. And we, there's people obviously. He's like, he's like, don't laugh. If you laugh, you're going to get in trouble. So we couldn't laugh. But it's kind of hard not to, so all these kids are like fucking with their boots, doing this and that. Another kid laughs, and he's like, go and crawl across the floor. Do not use your legs, only use your arms, and every time you lift up from the floor, yo, I'm a starfish. So this chick, you know, goes, so there's this kid yelling, or talking to a wall, and then there's this other kid that's crawling on the floor like this, and I'm a starfish. I'm a starfish. <laughs> to the point where, like, while, this, while our staff starts just talking, another kid laughs. So there's another starfish. <clears throat> and then another kid laughs. And this kid was made to full sprint around the gym. It's just full sprint. And it got to the point where the staff sergeant was having trouble not laughing. Or having trouble, yeah, having trouble not laughing because it was, he stopped talking. He just stopped talking and started looking at us, and uh, it was dead quiet. It was dead quiet, you know. And all you heard was this kid talking to a wall. This kid just full fucking sprinting, and two kids yelling, "I'm a starfish!" (laughs) And so, um, obviously, I mean, he's like, "All right, knock it off, knock it off." Yeah. And uh, so we all come back, and the kid that was talking to the wall walks straight up to the staff sergeant. And he's like, uh, "Yeah, uh, you want to hear about the you want to hear about the conversation I had?" And then the staff sergeant's like, "Get the fuck back to that wall right now." <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I remember one time it was a uh, math class, and um, this kid. I had beef with my staff sergeant. My staff sergeant, he was tied up, all this and that. He was um, EOD ordinance or whatever. He would like look for bombs and defuse bombs and shit. That's what he was. And uh, so he was kind of like a serious ass dude. So he had seen some shit? Oh yeah. And so obviously uh, be us being teenagers, we would fuck with him a lot. And so he had this Joker tattoo. Um. It said, why so serious on his arm? I'm trying to get that tattoo. And every time a kid would say, why so serious? He would make him do push-ups, blah, blah, blah. But at one point, he had it with that. And so this kid, you know, rolled up to him. And he's like, why so serious? Oh, my God. So the teacher fucking pushed him into a wall, fucking threw, like, put a table over him and, like, pinned him on the wall with the fucking table. And then the kid finally got out. Like, they were, like, kind of laughing, you know? The kid got out, ran outside, and the teacher grabbed his fucking bat, chased the kid out, and no one knew what happened. All I know is that the staff sergeant and another sergeant came back, like, grabbing this kid, like, 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 with his legs and arms, and, like, threw him into the fucking math class. It was funny as fuck. I don't think the kid got hurt, obviously. Um, there, nothing bad happened, but it was like funny as fuck because he just got like pinned to the wall with a whole ass table. I'm talking like whole table, like bigger than this. Like like the legs around him. Yeah, yeah. Like, He's like stuck in the wall with, you know, and... Some cartoon shit. Oh, yeah. And it was funny because like once the kid, you know, he slipped out of it, you know, the fucking teacher grabbed the fucking baseball bat and chased his ass down there. Jesus. That's yeah, hilarious. and then um, I remember another time a uh, a kid uh, threatened to shoot up the school, a military school where they have guns and shit. Where they have guns and their guys train. That is stupid as fuck. So what happened was we've been on lockdown, right? And the teacher, he's like, or the uh, vice principal is what. Um, it's not meant technically called the vice principal. He, she had a rank and everything, but I don't remember it. But, uh, she straight up said, yeah, I'll just grab the bat and beat the fuck out of the kid. Like, what's he gonna do? So, there was a bunch of badasses at that school, and there, we got to do a lot of cool shit. I was in aviation, and, uh, if you pass aviation, uh, you get 
to fly a plane. Like obviously with somebody. But I never I never did that. I never passed aviation. But um so yeah, it's like my original point, like the school fights there were pretty pretty crazy. Pretty crazy, you know. The teachers were crazy, everyone was crazy at the school. So Springfield High School, I, I went there. And uh, makes me think of full metal jacket, like, what the fuck is your major malfunction major? Ah. Like, if you don't get that stupid smirk out of your face, next three fucking seconds, I'll whip off your head and skull fuck you. <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> Just like the Lee Ermey shit. Dude, it was cool because the yeah. teachers like were not afraid of, like not afraid to cuss around us and stuff, and we were kind of allowed to cuss. But so with Springfield High School, the the school fights there were kind of sucked. Cause like oh like one kid would get a face shot and the other one would kind of pussy out. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of lame. I remember uh, there would be like kids like circle around like fight. It was the classic fight, fight, yeah. fight. You know, it was kind of lame. Nothing would ever happen though. Like there was only a couple school fights, but most of the time no, nothing would ever happen. I remember this one kid had beef with me. Because he was throwing frisbees and one of them hit my brother, and uh, it was just kind of he just kind of got mad. I like yo stop. I, I got mad. He's like, and I was like just stop throwing frisbees, bro. If, if, you, if, you get, if y'all can't aim with it and not hit us, don't do it. And he's like, what are you gonna do about it? And I was like, what do you want me to do about it? We can sell this here. He's like, and fucking <laughs> turns back around and does his own thing. And because I knew that kid because I used to be his friend back in like middle school. And I whooped his ass in middle school because he pissed me off. So he didn't really want to do anything about it, I guess. Oh, this is adding on to what we already had done. So it wasn't another 60. 60-